This program was recorded at Sun Bear Studio in Ripley, Mississippi. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi travelers. This is Heather with Talk Travel with Heather Tate, and I am so excited to share my adventures and tried and true tips with you, whether you are also a seasoned traveler, a hopeful traveler, or currently an armchair traveler, meaning you're going to follow along with us from home for now. This is our 106th episode of Talk Travel with Heather Tate. And if you tuned in last week, you know that we talked about Niagara Falls. There was so much in our Niagara Falls trip that I said that I had to break it up into multiple segments. And today I'm going to talk to you all about Niagara on the Lake in Ontario, Canada. Now, most everyone has heard of Niagara Falls. I'd venture to say almost everyone has heard of Niagara Falls. But Niagara on the Lake may be a place you have never heard about. And that's why I wanted to dedicate an entire episode to this magical place. I love places with character. And this is one of those places that has elevated itself. I knew that I would love it, but I was not prepared for how much I would love it. And I would venture to say, when I go back one day to Niagara Falls, as beautiful as it was to be in a high-rise hotel overlooking the falls for a couple of nights, I think that I would stay in a little B&B or historic inn in Niagara on the lake. It is only 35 minutes away from the world-renowned Niagara Falls. And it receives over 2 million annual visitors. At one time, briefly, it was even the capital of Upper Canada. And it was established in 1779 and has a fascinating history. So if you're a history buff, or if you love like places with Victorian charm, if you love the little towns like um, Natchez, Mississippi, or if you find yourself loving places like Charleston, South Carolina, or Savannah, Georgia, Niagara on the Lake has to be on your list. It is considered the most beautiful town in Ontario, maybe in all of Canada. And it is this picturesque little village on the banks of Lake Ontario. And so I'm going to share with you a little bit about the history, things to do, and why you should make this part of your trip if you go to Niagara Falls. Do you know the number of people who go to Niagara Falls that don't even know about Niagara on the Lake? It's a lot. And maybe before this episode, you had not even heard of it. But I want to make sure, oh, Mackinac Island. If you're a fan of Mackinac Island in Michigan or if you've been there or have always wanted to go, this is what I feel like in a way is the Canadian version of Mackinac Island. So much about that reminded me of it. So it's super close to Niagara Falls. If you're driving, it's a beautiful 35-minute drive. I'm talking like from the moment we left Niagara Falls, we're on the side with, with the Niagara River along the way. And there are many attractions on the way from Niagara Falls to Niagara on the lake. So you have the five Great Lakes. Four of the Great Lakes are pouring into the river that will flow off the edge of Niagara Falls, okay? And then they all run together into Lake Ontario, and that is where Niagara on the Lake is situated. It is Ontario's wine country. So like the Napa Valley of Ontario, is Niagara on the Lake. We passed by so many vineyards. Like I was like, I want to go to this vineyard. And they all have restaurants and gift shops and you can do wine tours. So, so many of them, you could just, you just go up, right? You don't have to make a reservation. You can go in and do a sample, which is what we ended up doing. But others, you may want to have an actual reservation for a tour. If you're doing a longer tour, not just wanting to buy wine or eat at the restaurants or or do a sampling. Have you ever heard of ice wine. Until this trip, I'm researching and planning for this trip, I never heard of ice wine. It is something that is only found in this area of the world. So it is when the grapes receive their first frost and they're picked off of the of the vines, frozen, and then they are turned into wine. So because it is a rare event and you can't find this anywhere else, and because it's, you know, only a one time of year kind of thing when they're harvested as they've iced over, you can just imagine this is going to be very expensive wine. We did a sampling of the ice wine and you can do a a full tour where you're in like parkas and you're like getting to sample the ice wine like in a giant igloo. And when I go back one day, and especially if Logan and I are going for a romantic trip or if you're going for a honeymoon or an anniversary trip, I really recommend that. We went with our family. We had our boys with us. So we just did the sample where we could taste the ice wine. We didn't do the whole shebang. And that's what I would want to do next time. But it was Eight U at eight Canadian dollars for a one point five ounce sample. So when I say this was not a cheap wine, a bottle a hundred dollars Canadian for a bottle of ice wine. So when we realized how pricey this was, we were like, we're good with a couple of tiny samples just so we can have it. Say we tried it. 
It's a dessert wine. So if you've ever had sherry or port, similar to that, lots of different flavors can be mixed into, like we had um, apricot in some of ours, honey. It was it was delicious, but also very sweet. Logan would say he was not a fan when he tried mine. So if you're not a wine connoisseur, like what else can you do there? Okay, so for winter, it comes down to where you would stay. We stayed in a beautiful Airbnb because our family traveling with Andy and Amanda, we wanted somewhere we could stay together, each have our own bedrooms, have a space where if we wanted to share a meal or a snack, and we did, we had pie, play board games. We wanted to be all together because we had our own rooms when we were staying at the hotel. So we're like, this will be our last night of our trip. This is how we were ending it. We wanted to be all together that last night. So we rented an Airbnb that was in a walkable distance to downtown. Even though we decided to drive, it was still, it was walkable. There are lots of beautiful bed and breakfast here, historic inns, hotels, the Prince of Wales Hotel, which also serves high tea in the afternoons in their beautiful glassed in dining room. That would be a beautiful place to stay. So there's lots of options. This is where you're wanting to go. Like I, I picture really for a romantic getaway, that would be great if you're staying in the B&B. So other things that you can do, if you are a golf fan, did you know that the oldest golf course in North America, established in 1875, was right here, Niagara on the Lake? There are more golf courses too, but that's the oldest. I think there are three or four more in the area. So you can golf. You can go to vineyards. We saw the sunset over Lake Ontario with the skyline of Toronto in the distance. It was absolutely stunning. We came around a bend and there were all these Canada geese and there were ducks and there were people that are in little sailboats. It was just like out of a postcard with the sun setting and you could see Toronto skyline in the distance. Absolutely gorgeous. There are walking trails everywhere. There are bike trails everywhere. So you could do a bike tour. You don't even have to bring your own bike. There are bikes that you could rent and miles and miles of bike trails along the Niagara River and throughout Niagara on the Lake. Horse-drawn carriage rides throughout the picturesque little town. We walked around, saw the shops, had ice cream. Of course, I'm going to get some kind of maple-flavored ice cream. I also, they, you know, they're going to have Moose Tracks ice cream, which I, I, which I love. So we got to experience that there. Um, we went into little shops, and it was a lot of fun. The fruit stands on the side of the road that are seasonal absolutely wonderful for this time of year. We managed to get some pies. They had homemade pies. We got cherries and strawberries and fruit in Canada is just delicious in the summer. The pie that I picked, I wanted something that was going to be a little different. Strawberry rhubarb. That's not something that we can get just anywhere here. So I wanted to get something, you know, more authentic for where we, where we were. And it was a crumbled crust and topping. It was really good. We had that for breakfast and a late night snack that night. If you love the theater, they have the Shaw Theater Festival that runs from April through October. Again, those are the most popular times to visit this area. They have 11 plays that are rotating three to four stages throughout the town. The town itself, we're talking more flowers than you can dream. It feels like walking through just like almost like just a garden the entire town and I'm going to tell you more about this but that's all the time we have for the radio portion please tune in for the extended episode where I'm going to share a few more things that you can do in Niagara on the Lake that's it for this edition of Talk Travel with Heather Tate tune in every Monday at 11 a.m. to turn your travel dreams into travel plans if you have a question comment or suggestion for an interview or for access to this interview go to our website shark1023.com and click on the podcast tab. This interview can also be found on Apple, Google, and Amazon podcast. Keep it tuned to the Shark 1023 and start planning your next trip.